Hello and welcome to your demonstration on shading with a light source and three-point perspective. So for this practice, you're going to need your two and three-point practices. This is from Google Doc 11 where we reviewed two-point and then we learned in three-point. So we're going to use this one to practice shading initially. You're going to need your ruler. I would get out your three sizes of blenders. We're gonna just use the medium one because I want you to keep these for like your final draft. And then your 2B and 6B shading pencil, old school wooden pencil, yellow pencil, and eraser. Okay, so um, I am putting a shading and three-point perspective help packet, this is just the beginning of it, in your Google Classroom. And so it goes over like what we're doing, but it'll have a lot more structure, so there's more variety, like what if it's a round structure, et cetera, et cetera. So pretty much what we're going to learn is that your light source becomes a vanishing point, um, even if the light source is off the page. So we'll talk about off the page when I do a demonstration for the final draft, but we're gonna put it on the page for these practices. Okay, so um, I'm gonna go hmm, maybe like top center. We're gonna just work on the three point side. So this is gonna be my sun or my light source and it's going to act like a vanishing point. So let's say we're gonna do this bottom structure first. So let's say I wanna cast shadow on the surface. Uh, then I would use my ruler and line it up with my um, structure. So I'm gonna go here on this corner. So I'm lining it up with my light source. I'm gonna give myself a little guideline, okay. Lining up with my light source, give myself a little guideline. I'm also going to do it over here as well. So that tells you like how much the cast shadow would extend out. Let's see. And you might. No, I'm not going to do that one. Okay. So just remember that your cast shadows don't have to be really dark, but if you're aiming for realism, you know, then you do want it to be um, darker right underneath and then fading out. So I don't want it to be really dark. I'm going to use my 2B pencil and you don't have to use newspaper padding for this practice, but you'll most definitely use it for final draft. Circular motion, circular motion. I'm actually going to erase this line. And so since this side is facing totally away, this is the total opposite side than this side, this side would actually be a little darker. So along this line that I erased, because I didn't want a harsh line in there, I'm going to go a little bit darker on this side to where you would have kind of like an edge showing, but I didn't want like a dark outline. Okay, so over here, remember you can hold your pencil horizontally, so you can use the whole side of it. And if you're struggling with smoothness, you can definitely um, use newspaper padding. Okay, so with your medium blender, so you have your super small one, which you're definitely gonna, I would save this one for final draft, you have your larger one. So I'm gonna use medium. Circular motion using the whole side of it. So remember that you should be using the whole side of this. So it's kind of like you put it on the paper, the paper and you pick it up and you hold it horizontally let's say my finger is the surface you kind of slant it down and use the whole side okay so I like to do the cast shadows first that way I know how much lighter I want my buildings or structures to be um, the only downfall of doing that is I mean you don't have to you can do it however you want but I just know like, okay, then I want my structures to either be lighter or darker for contrast. Okay, so um, 
the downfall of doing that is you're going to need to put something underneath your hand. So I'm just going to put a piece of paper under my hand. So for this side, if I wanted to go much darker, I would disregard my, my shading on top. The top would actually be really, really light. So I would go darker right underneath the side um, that is completely opposite from the light. And then I would fade down because in reality, remember that you would have light beams da, 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 that are straight, straight. Okay, pretend they're straight. And then they hit the surface and then they bounce back up. So you want some reflected light. Let me just erase that part. You don't have to draw that part. So for ultimate realism, we want some reflected light. Obviously spend more time blending and shading on your final drafts. We're just doing a quick practice so you can kind of see what it might look like. Okay, so then this side I would go a little bit lighter. I'd probably go like a little darker along the edge. And then fade out. And I would keep that light because the sun is from behind, it's from the top. Okay, so then let's say this structure is floating. And so I would check and see if I would see a cast shadow on what's in front of it. So if the floating structures or things that are just hanging out in the sky. So this one, I'm gonna just test it out and see. Super lightly. Oh, I would. I would have a cast shadow on there. Okay. So the key is that you are consistent. So once you've shaded one, so this is like the left hand side of this main corner, then the left hand side of the main corner of everything would get shaded. So like this side would get shaded, this side would get shaded, obviously because that one's shaded. So I did this one to see if this would cast a shadow on here, and it does. So if I wanted to make it look like it was close to it, then I would include that shadow. So as if it's blocking the light because this is floating above it. If you don't have anything floating above, you don't, you wouldn't do this. So then that's a little more believable. And then if I was going to put a shadow on the ground, I actually would, I mean, just, how much of it would I be able to see on this one? Let's see. That back corner. Okay. So if I wanted to put this, disregard, we don't even need this, that's okay. If I want to put a shadow on the ground, I'm going to use these guidelines and then I could do a parallel cutoff. So this is this blue line here, then I would, let's say I want a shadow on the ground here. So it's parallel, but it lines up. So since this line lines up with the left vanishing point, VP1, I'm using VP1 to like cut off my cast shadow or to start it really. Okay, so over here, this one uses the right vanishing point. So therefore, I'm going to do a parallel cutoff, parallel, parallel. Actually, I do need that back corner. Okay, so I have this corner and this corner, and I want to find the back of it. This is only if it's floating. Okay, so I'm using opposite vanishing points. So it gives me this, this corner. So then I can use that. I'm just gonna guesstimate over here. Okay. 
Okay, so then that shadow would be about here. And so um, because it's floating above, it wouldn't be as dark as this one. So I'd probably switch and do old school wooden pencil, like super lightly. And then I would kind of fade out and make it fuzzy because the further away, and you might use like some of these lines like to kind of fade it out, but it gives you the shape at least to start from. So the further away something is from the surface, um, the less detailed your cast shadow is. And the more, or sorry, the closer it is to the surface, obviously you'd have that shadow like right underneath it. So if I wanted my floating object to cast a shadow, which is optional, I mean, if it's like pretty close to the ground, I would say yes. If it's like way up here, probably no. You got enough, you got enough going on in these drawings. But if you ever wanted to know that. And I would kind of clean up, I should have done this before, sorry. Clean up, clean up. And you can use tissue if it's a big area. So therefore it looks like this is casting a shadow, it's casting a shadow on this one, it's blocking it, and then you have your cast shadow. Also anything that's closer to you would have a darker shadow because it's more detail, etc. Okay, so there is your light source um, in three point perspective. So your light source acts like a vanishing point and you do line up your lines of convergence with it. So remember that we lined up the, the side, especially of structures that are on the ground. And you might have to guesstimate a little bit, but now you know kind of like the rules, then you can guesstimate for the final draft, especially if you have buildings blocking each other and you can't necessarily draw the background. You know, you can kind of like guesstimate like, okay, it's parallel. Hold on, let me get another color. Like this back, back side is parallel to this side. This side is parallel to this side. You can kind of give a guesstimation of where it would start and then it would just fade out. And notice how it's less detailed than the shadows that are in front because that will create some depth or dimension. It looks like it's further away because the shadow is less detailed. Okay, your next demonstration is glass and you're going to actually get your sketch for that one. So leave out your supplies. The next demonstration is for glass. Okay, good luck.